Okay, so uh, what I did first is to create two plants, one with the ground floor and the second one with the first floor. So in this way, I'm going to model everything according to this. Okay, let's go to Trees Max. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to bring in the two plants. Okay, so I have my drag and drop reference, as you can see here. Now I just need to drag and drop my planes. So I'm gonna do the first one. I need to add a uh, UV map to it. Okay, and I'm in the front view, so I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. I'm gonna make a copy of it. I'm just gonna add uh, another, the second material. So this is just a standard uh, legacy from what I see. Okay, that it doesn't matter for now. And I will bring here the first floor and I'm going to apply this to my second plane. And now I have both of my planes on top of each other so this way in this way i'm going to be able to trace all of this into uh, 3d studio max and create the walls and the uh, rest of the stuff in here so first of all what i need to figure out is the height and i can do that by <clears throat> yeah just thinking uh, how big this can be so what i can do oh, so if I figure out this distance here, then yeah, I can just uh, make a square and then figure out also the total height in here uh, and so on. So to do that, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two planes. I'm going to group them together. I'm going to create a layer, of course, plans. And now I'm just going to go on top. And uh, now and by knowing that this door, for example, is 900, let me just check the unit setup first system in millimeters millimeters that should be fine for now and now i'm just gonna create here a rectangle and this rectangle i'm just gonna make it uh, 900 and i will just move it here on top and what i need to do now because i know that this is one 900 i need to scale all of this i'll just move the pivot here to get to the 900 so i'm just doing that right now i'm gonna take the grid out move my plywood in the middle of this and now I will scale again yeah we are almost there as you can see just need to scale it down for a bit yeah I think it's like this more or less this uh, should be correct so what I can do now is by knowing that this is 900 now I can also measure here the distance and I can go with another rectangle here and make this measurement and it's 2.4 meters so this is definitely a good uh, distance here and the total is almost 10 meters okay i'm gonna open this in my photoshop okay, i'll just take the brush and i'll just make here some so i know that here there are two meters we said that here uh, we have 2.4 meters so if this is 2.4 and I go more or less 90 degrees, yeah, I have another 900, so maybe more or less 3 meters. Makes sense, the height. So if this is 3 meters and this is 10, so probably another 50, another 50, so in total around 4 meters. So this means that we have another 4 meters here, more or less. So uh, yeah, we can also calculate that on the on the on the plan so if that's four meters probably here we have another 50 and here we have one two three four steps by 17 17 by 4 so 68 around 70 so we have 70 here centimeters sorry for switching all the time to from meters to centimeters but i'm sure you guys should know how is that working so yeah what else do we need here so that's if that's 50 that's also 50 but this we're going to see also in the plan so yeah i think we have some measurements in here for now um yeah i'm also going to use uh, this view as my as my render actually we're gonna render this view so for the vegetation we're just going to use some vegetation from Corona Cosmos. I'm trying to use only stuff that it's free for you guys so you can also follow up exactly what I'm doing here but not I'm not always finding exactly what I need so yeah sometimes I get it sometimes I don't have it so I'll try to find the free stuff for you guys. So okay we are ready let's uh, start with this. And I will add that in here just for me to have it. Okay so what I said was the fact that 
I'm gonna ungroup this for now. I have a distance of four meters. So I'm just gonna go with this here using the, we'll take both of them actually and move them to zero. And then from here, I'm just gonna hide this and open this and move this to four meters, we said. Okay, and now in the plan, I will make another layer named ground floor and first floor. And I will move both of them inside here. And then this needs to go out. Now I have each plan on his own uh, uh, layer. So in this way, it's gonna be much easier for me to work with this. So I will move all of this here for now. And now I can have my command panel and the scene explorer, layer explorer in the same place. I don't need this here anymore because I already have it here. So yeah, let's start. I will just save my file for now. 3D exterior from start to finish. Riverside house zero zero six. Okay, and let's see. So what's happening here, as you can see, we have this thing going all over here somewhere in the back. And then we have these volumes that are intersecting and another big volume on top of all of this. So this is what we also going to do. So I'm going to create this first and then the rest of the things. So what I'm going to do first is to go here and create architecture inside here. And I'm just going here until here. And I'm going to make this width set four meters. So 4,000, as you can see. And I'm just going to move this here, change the pivot into this corner, and then rotate everything 90 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna apply an editable spline to this. I'm gonna delete my bottom edge. I'm going to apply a sweep to this and this sweep is going to be a bar and this needs to be very very long but on the other direction and it needs to go here somewhere i will use an alt x to see what's happening in there and as you can see it's going only until here so it doesn't i need to need to make it that long it's less than seven meters it's like this and now what i need to do is to apply a shell to it i don't care what's happening in the back because we are going to render only the front view of this house so Let's create the width also. As you can see, it's going on the exterior, so I need it on the interior, so I'm gonna do this. And we said this is around 500, let's see. Yeah, we, we said it correctly. So we have the first part. As you can see here, when you see this kind of stuff happening in your with this gradient on your 3D model, it means that you have a problem with the smoothie. So it means that this is kind of wrong. So to fix that, you need to apply a smooth and it's done. Now it's correct, you don't have a smoothing prob problem anymore. Okay, these are our steps, one, two, three. But from what I saw in the picture, it felt like there are four of them. One, two, three, four. There are four steps actually, but in the plan, there are only three. I don't know why, maybe there is something wrong here. No idea. Anyway, we're gonna make four. So, okay, let's just have, uh, let's create the second one. So the second uh, volume, which is this one here with a dotted line, as you can see, which is going until here in the bag, maybe. It's not possible. If we look at the pictures, there is this volume going in the bag. Ah, it's not even there. So yeah, that dotted line is something else. But anyway, we can see that by just showing them our other other plan so i'll bring in the first floor and i'll hide this so this is our volume as you can see so what i'm going to do i'm gonna go here and create normal rectangle on this and bring that up the same height of this uh, from what i saw in the 3d model there is a small gap i mean there is a small seam here in between them so we're going to create that but until then i'm just gonna extrude this for now i'm just we set this four meters so it's four thousand i'm just gonna hide this and uh, yeah, this is our volume. I'm gonna add a camera in here, a standard physical camera. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit more in the back. I'm gonna make it straight to be sure that it's uh, all uh, matching with the image that we have. Okay, now I think it's correct. Let's have a look at the image. I could even do it exactly the same size as this and matching it with uh, where I showed you how to match your camera 
with a view, with a picture, but for now I will uh, just leave it as it is. It uh, doesn't need to be exactly the same, but it needs to look good. So that's the main thing. Okay, so for now this should be fine. So what I'm going to do next is to create the window in this wall. I'm gonna select these two. I'm gonna select my uh, extruded my box and I'm going to try to create here my window. So to do that it's uh, going to the front. We said we left here around 50 so I'm gonna create in here a rectangle 500 by 500 and add that in here and move it on the corner. Also, it's better to have it there. I'm using all of this only just as a reference to create my, my loops. And then I'm going to apply an editable poly to all of this. And with Alt-1, I'm just gonna create my first loop, which is here. And then my second one, which is here. And what I need next is to create my verticals. One and one. This doesn't need to be perfect, but uh, it just needs to be more or less there. And now I will just create, I will extend my loop here my plane with shift and uh, we have our first detail which is the window hide the selection hide all oh, we need to hide all of them from here okay so we are getting somewhere okay this is the garage door probably it's uh, where the door is actually opening so as you can see it has these lines now let's move forward with the walls now I'm going to create so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to create another layer with cameras and lights. We don't need two layers for this. Um, it's for much easier for me. And I'm going to move my camera in here. Maybe let's just call it camera. No, I'll just leave it as it is. Okay. And then this uh, is going to, I'm going to create first floor, first floor and I'm just gonna hide that these two can also go I don't need them anymore and now I can just go here and create my my door for the garage so to do that I'm just going to create a line in here I'm gonna name this uh, ground floor I'll go until here where the door is let's have a look Okay, I'm just gonna extrude this for now. Four meters, so I need 3,500 in here. So this should be fine. And let's see how many division do I need to make here. One, two, 15, 16. So 16, Oop. I'll apply an editable poly to this. And I'm going to connect using the connect and I'm going to make 15 here because I want 16 okay now I'm just gonna select all of them and I'm gonna do an inset okay now I'm just gonna for another 15 See, is it looking good? Oh, I need to extrude it on the other side. Okay, I'll just leave it as it is. I'll just apply a shell for now. I'll just make it, um, let's say 30, inner mount 30. And then I will apply another right double poly on top of this and I'll just select my boxes here and I will extrude this in the inside. 20 okay I'll move here to clay and uh, yeah we have the door the only thing that we're missing are these lines the horizontal one one two three four five six so I divide this by five and I don't need to make a selection on, oh, on the middle line actually I should go on the, like this and now I have with a control, if you select this, you're gonna have only the selection of your lines from that plane. And I'm gonna go with Alt, I'm gonna unselect these lines, these edges. Okay, 
And now I'm just gonna make use the connect and create here five, I think we said one, two, three, four, five, six. And, uh, and now I'm just going to leave it as it is and using an editable poly, I'm gonna make a small inset here of one millimeter or so just to be sure and then I'm going to extrude this for a bit using the control I'm gonna make a selection not only with these lines as you can see with these edges from the new extrusion and now here I'm gonna apply a poly select and because I made the selection earlier I still have it in here and now I will apply a chamfer to this and now because I did all of that now I have a smooth on each face as you can see, you can see the gradient and now it's gonna look more realistic. I don't know if you can see it, but we need to get kind of similar with this. So see, they are also having a small smooth on it. Yeah, this smooth is coming most of the time on the metals because the metals have a different way of interacting with the environment. So they are getting this kind of smooth on them all the time. So to do that, you just need to create a, a chamfer that has smoothed the entire object. So it's going to apply the smooth only on those parts. Of course, if you want to add another smooth in here, you can apply another uh, poly select and this and another chamfer. And this is going to be applied everywhere. But you can go here and use a control Y go to the top and don't apply it in this area because we don't need it here we just want it here in the front and not in the middle part because we already did that that area we already apply a smooth there oh. yeah, I know this is uh, quite a lot of work and some of you are gonna say, oh, but you don't see the detail, you don't see that in the render or whatever. But trust me, these small details, they make your renders look much realistic. Because it's always a problem of, people are always asking me, how, how do you create realistic renders? Well, well, it's quite easy. Create realistic renders, you first, you need to have very good geometry. And as you can see now, I did that. And now when I go into my smooth, it's going to apply the smooth only here. And I can add a couple of more and now you have more details in there and now it's looking more realistic okay so uh yeah we have this for now and uh, what we're going to do next we're gonna create the rest of the stuff so let's see so now we need the rest of the wall which is until here so i'm just gonna take what i did here and i'm gonna try to apply it in here and also here but as you can see there is a small detail here which is the height of the stairs, which is probably 60 or less. I don't know exactly what's the height of all of this. I said it's 70, but uh, I'm not very sure about that. Okay, I'm just gonna take this, make a copy of it, copy, and I'm gonna take out all these details that I just add them. I'm gonna move this here in the corner of this. These chamfers, I don't need to see them in the viewport, at least not that one. Okay, this is good. Now I'm gonna go to my top view and see exactly until where it's going to my wall. So it's going until here. I'm gonna apply a um, symmetry here and this symmetry I'm gonna move it around here on the Y. I'm just gonna rotate this in the flip way 90 degrees. I'm going to delete these two editable polys. I'm gonna apply another editable poly in here. I'm gonna select these faces and I'm gonna extrude them. 20, my local normals, and minus 20 in this case. So I need them inside. And the only problem is that I'm getting also here this detail. Let me see how it is in the picture. Because in this area you don't have it, but here I don't know exactly what's happening. So should we make it or not? Oh, I'm not very sure about it. So I will apply an editable poly to this. I'll just select my faces, but also these two. Because I think the dimension stays the same. Yeah, you can't have everything exactly. I will go local normals. 
and minus 20. Yeah, I'll we'll just uh, leave it as it is. I think it's quite okay. And then I will just apply a chamfer to all of this, which is this one, as you can see. And it's now creating again this smoothing thing. And uh, yeah, it's going to look amazing. I'll take the rest of the stuff out because I don't really need it. And I will apply also an UV map for later as a box. Now I'll take this and also apply it in here for later. It's just a matter, I will just save my file. I will just make a copy of this on the X axis. I'm gonna go to the plan and uh, this symmetry is exactly where I need it. Otherwise, I need to create some need to work more on this. And uh, yeah, it's perfect. Only problem is that I don't have everything exactly where I need it, so I need to recreate the editable poly, but that's gonna be fine. Yeah, my wall needs to finish here, so I'm gonna use. I will use that in the end. Yeah, I can just go poly select. Then use an extrude, base extrude. And I will just go minus 20. And then at the end, uh, you can just use also chamfer to this and also here I need to add another poly select to actually I will add a smooth first because here I had a smooth group problem and then I will just paste my chamfer and uh, yeah we have another piece in here but the only thing is that here it doesn't go that low as this part so what I'm going to do next I'm gonna create here a small wall and I'm gonna add that on top of it. So probably the shell is going to be bigger and also this part on top here, then I'm gonna make it a little bit uh, bigger. So yeah, let's do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go from here. I'm just gonna move forward with all of this even though I'm not going to see, I hope, uh, my stuff here. So this is my concrete part, I'm gonna extrude this, uh, we set 700, it's even less, I don't remember how much is it, uh, 68, so 680. I'm gonna apply a shell to all of this, uh, here, zero, and this I'm gonna make it 400. Now I'll just go back here and take all these points, all these vertices and move all of them like this. Okay, this is uh, looking good I will say. Okay, so here I need to create that small detail. So this is uh, around 20, so I'm gonna go another 20 on the bottom, minus 20. Now I'll just add back all of this. I already talked about, yeah, so using clay you can always see all the details and how everything is actually looking. To this, it has a smooth, I'm also going to add a chamfer to it. Without the smooth entire object only on the chamfer, I'm gonna use two millimeters. It needs to be a little bit round, so it's gonna look more realistic. Okay, now uh, we are getting there. And so this part I would like to have it under and uh, another thing that i will do at the end now i will add the symmetry to all of this on the y now i will use a poly select again and i will select this part in the front and i will apply a slice only to that and remove the positive in this way i'm just gonna cut my metal part oh here i am because i added the symmetry and weld seam yeah maybe this uh, symmetry can go 
here under. Mm, yeah, I have the face extrude and then I need to apply another poly select to clean all the smooth and then I have the smooth on top and then the symmetry. And now I do the, another poly select and the chamfer and at the end I'm doing this poly select only to cut my geometry here to get a slice and now we'll do that also for the other side poly select and I'll select all of this and use the slice and uh, yeah we have this part which is looking good I like the fact that it is symmetrical and I can see this also in the other direction so yeah mm, let's see what else we need to do here we need a frame for the window and another one for the door Then we also need to add yeah we don't need to add anything okay let's uh, create the rest of the stuff first let's create the window here i'm just gonna make a quick uh, rectangle select this move it here and with using an editable spline on it i'm just gonna extend it here here and then using the usual get 20 by 20 let's say even more 50 by 50 make a copy of it yeah going here and deleting the bottom part and extending making everything a corner extending this to here and then we have the frame for the door we also need to the frame for the glass but before that I'm just going to apply a chamfer to all of these smooth the chamfers only okay I don't need to see it off in the viewport and create the glass sheet which is going in here I will just add it more or less in the middle apply a shell to it to this shell one and one millimeters so on top of two probably is going to be three millimeters but it doesn't matter for now and then I will just go and create the door so the front oh uh, yeah we need also a chamfer but I will apply that afterwards I will go here I'm gonna extrude this minus 50 I'm going to apply a chamfer to it even two oh two millimeters smooth chamfer only copy apply also to this one all these small details we are going to see them of course you can add more details in here if you want to have the hinges and all that, that kind of stuff and also here the handle I think the frame it's a little bit bigger actually so like how much I made it 50 no no it's fine okay I will add here the handle which is just this simple line Sweep, I'll go with the cylinder 15. Is it enough? Oh, yeah, it's looking good. Let's create some extra details to this. Uh, let's have it in the middle and less. Be like this also intersect Let's go till here and have both of them on the corner okay I'm not gonna move forward with all these details probably we're not going to see all everything but uh, yeah, let's see how it's everything looking. We have also the first floor in here. Oh uh, yeah, I'm quite uh, happy with the whole thing. I will say we need to create also the window here and probably a little bit of the walls and the interior because we're going to see uh, some stuff in there. And um, yeah, let me just uh, save all of this. So yeah, for those who are following me on my Patreon, they can just uh, download this from here. Uh, you just need to be a knight or a Jedi master. 
there is a lot of lot of stuff happening in here that you can actually download uh, so everything that i ever made in this channel is going to be in here okay so let's move forward we need to create this window as you can see here let's do that i already created this box i'm just gonna detach my uh, polygon this one that i already created as a for the window and now i'm gonna detach this okay and now i'm just gonna create my window in here so to do that i'm going to use just a simple rectangle i'm gonna use a sweep to this as a bar of 100 maybe by 100 50. Okay, now I'm just gonna apply an editable spline to this and I'm gonna make a copy, control and shift. I'm gonna make everything as a corner. And yeah, let's uh, just create here a rectangle for the box 500 by 500. This should be okay. And now let's move all these edges in the right place to get there a nice square. Yeah, this intersection, it shouldn't happen here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a copy of this. I mean, I'm going to move that vertex there and then make a copy and then Do all of this and now I'm gonna create the glass sheet even though I can use the one that I have I will just use that one for now doesn't make any sense to work too much on this because it's just a window okay so we have the frame I'm gonna use all course chamfer only the smooth we're getting here some details I'm gonna make this off in the viewport actually I'm just gonna create the glass sheet also because I just want to have it and I don't want you to think that it's easier to leave this kind of uh, loose geometry in here. Editable poly, and I'm just going to attach this, this, this. Apply a shell to all of this, one and one. And add everything on the... Okay, uh, now we still have the geometry behind. Hide all. Okay, this is... Uh, I'm gonna group this and then now let's see the interior so it's just a wall we can also see that in the floor plan but we just need the right floor plan and uh, this is the one so I'm going to create a line here another one here and here I'm just gonna create these interiors, so it's just for us to... Oh, I'm not gonna work too much on this, because we're not going to see everything. So let's extrude all of this. Also, yeah, this should be around 4, 4, 4 50. And this should be extruded. I will just put it in 25. 270. It's already looking okay. I will apply an editable poly to it. With R1, I will just create here a line. And I'm gonna move this up with the height of the door. 2200. And this is the door, I will just uh, detach this for now. Where is it? Detach. And for the rest, I'm gonna apply a shell. Zero. Make this into a corner. And just uh, apply a smooth. It should be fine for now. And for the door, I will just move it. Oh, don't need that much. The width. The walls okay. 
Okay, and for the floor, make a copy of it and delete all of this with a line, create a line in here. Just need to weld everything. Okay, minus 100. Uh, so the, this is the door where we need a little bit more height. This is the window that we need a little bit more height. I'm just gonna move this in here and then I will just need to add also copy the ceiling. Okay, and this needs to be a little bit higher. This should be fine. This means that also the door. Yeah. Okay, let me just hide this for now. I do this and now we have some walls and some stuff happening in there so this is perfect the only problem is that the door that we made it's not on the right height so we're gonna fix that in a second yeah okay it's, in it. it's here so now I just fixed also the hole for the door I will just save this for now yeah maybe also here I should create a little bit of the interior going to see some stuff in there so yeah, there is some stuff happening in here. Oh, here there are two doors, I think, or yeah, there are definitely two doors in there. Okay, let's create the pavement. Oh, the pavement, and uh, for that I'm gonna create a layer pavement. And uh, let's start doing that. And for doing that, I'm just gonna use a line. I an editable for it just so I can see it. And then these are the steps. <coughs> Create the rest of the stuff, which is here. Okay, this one, I kind of missed this point here. Okay, now it's fine. And now, yeah, let's do the landscape for a bit. I will also use uh, the line. Okay, and these points, they can actually go lower because I think the landscape is going like that. And if I apply now an editable poly to this, you should see it. Then I can just add a retopology and compute. As you can see, we can get the. I don't really like that. But also this. Okay, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to use the quick slice and make some slices in here. I'll add another editable poly and try to fix all these points. Yeah, they are probably or more or less the same. Anyway, I need to compute again the retopology because the, the retopology it uh, remembers the angle. But for now, it's just uh, totally fine because in the end, uh, if I'm looking better at this, we're gonna go forward with the camera. I will leave the final render as much as closer to the square because I need it for my YouTube channel. But for you guys, you can use whatever you want. So I'm gonna see a little bit more from of here and the less from this part. So yeah, this uh, should be fine for now. I will just save my stuff and uh, yeah, let's create the stairs, the steps. So uh, let's create. Uh, Fine for now, and now extrude 
uh, 175. Now by selecting these two together, you can just create a little poly. Okay, now I'll just take all of this and I'm gonna extrude all of the 175 and then I'll take these two and then these two extrude and then this one extrude and we have the steps. Another thing that we need to do is to create the light that is underneath. So to do that, I'm just gonna select all these edges. I'm gonna make a connect to all of them with only one line. And then I will select these spaces. And I'm just going to extrude all of this like this. And that's it. Just save it. And we have the steps also. It's everything in the correct dimension. And then for this, from what I saw, it has some details on it. Yeah, it's divided in these big squares, or there is one here, one here, one here. Yeah, I can also do that. I have some extra details in here. I can also do this, it should be fine for now. And apply an editable poly, break all of this, apply a shell, 0, minus 20, 20, 50 maybe, 150 and I can also apply a small chamfer to it. Now we can see some lines and some more, I'll just make it smooth chamfer so we can have some small details in there, maybe even two. Okay, height selection. Yeah, we need also this part here. So let's see how is that looking. Uh, okay, so we have some piece of. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna. Also, oh, this is not really going exactly where I wanted. This needs to go here. Okay. Sweep bar 200, maybe? Even more. 600. That sounds so uh, much more realistic. And then, ah, uh, oh yeah, it's actually this distance. You can see it here. It's around this. And now, okay. And this is going to be also with a sweep. You can see sweep is very important tool in 3D Studio Max. It's a, a must. So I will just make this also 450, maybe. Yeah, let's see the height. So it's almost two, three steps. 175 by three, three, five, 25, five, 25. And uh, with uh, four, this should be fine. We'll apply a chamfer to this, on this, like this, two, two also. And now let's create, let's have the, Okay, this is uh, looking good. I'm just gonna move this lower. Oh, they're not all in the same height. This is a problem. Let's fix all of that. Can, this can go here. I can take all the lines, one millimeter weld. And now let's check again the height. This can go a little bit lower like this. And I can apply a bit of a poly to it. Yeah, this is looking good right now. I like it. Okay, what's next here? I need to move this part like this. And here we have a small uh, lake or water. I don't even know how to call it exactly. So,
So yeah, here there is a like a small a river. I don't even know how to call it. Which is all straight. Okay, this is uh, fine. Just gonna apply a retopology. It also doesn't want to because there is a cap somewhere. I will just weld this. Corner and now it should work. Okay, I'll just use a little topology. Turbo smooth. All the noise to it. A little bit of noise just to have a little bit of water there. And then I'm just going to continue this up on the other side and try to create the road. Are we going to see this? Maybe, maybe not, but it's good to have it. This is our water here. I need to apply a double poly and try to fix all of this to have it in the same plane. Attach this, can leave that as it is, my line. And then this needs to Beautiful, and I have a street. I don't know how wide is this street. We can check that in a second. 338, so this should be actually around 6 meters at least. This is for the sidewalk. So sweep uh, the sidewalk 50, 100. This is fine. Only problem is that the sidewalk and this should be on the same height. I'm just gonna find these two points, try to arrange them in such a way that it's going to. I need to redo the retopology. This is a very annoying thing in the uh, 3 Studio Max with this retopology thing. And then we have the street, which we said it's uh, 6,000. I'll do that and then we're gonna add another sidewalk on the other copy and uh, yeah it's also a couple of more details in here but and uh, here we are just gonna have some green stuff happening with some trees or whatever just gonna add a little poly to it yeah we need to add some streets maybe on uh, house if i can find the 3d model of a nice house okay so for now we finish with the 3d model as you can see i think it's looking quite good overall three things they are touching together no so this one needs to go a little bit further which is here that's good now let's see for the rest okay these two also need to go together so this part it needs to move here and uh, this one needs to also move here okay uh, yeah we need some floor in here otherwise so uh, the things are not gonna go very well so what i'm going to do i'm gonna take all these uh, things i'm just going to create with a rectangle on I'm using a editable spline. Apply a shell to all of this. So again, all of this needs to go in the bottom part. This should be fine for now. Here we have a room that we need to fix this. 
recap. I'm just gonna create some walls just to be sure that we're not going to see uh, some crazy stuff happening behind. And uh, what I'm going also to do is to create another one, the copy, minus 150, and another one at the top. Oh, the problem is that this is not weld. Now let's copy here. This one can start to come end. And also to delete this line. And have a shell. Everything in order. Oh, this angle is not really Okay, I'll resave everything. Here also we need to add a cap to this part. Don't want to get any light through there. But first what I need to do is to make this chamfer. Just gonna apply an extrude. Can go minus two, but it still don't care that much. I'm not going to see anything, but I just need to be sure that there is no light coming through there. And this is the floor. Maybe it's better to make it 3000. No. for now and uh, now let's go I'm going to use V-Ray for this version yeah I hope it's gonna look well for now what I need to do is to go to global switch make this to advanced and to take the hidden lights for now I need a material override and here I need to bring a V-Ray MTL and for this V-Ray MTL bring here I MTL in here. I'm just gonna make it 220. Can even go further. Okay, and what I'm going to do next on my layer camera and lights, I'm gonna make a V-ray dome light, V-ray light, and here you go, dome, and you apply here dome light, and to this light we're going to apply a V-ray bitmap. And I'm going to load initially this HDRI from Polyheaven. You can just take the link from here. It's the farm sunset. And I'm gonna load this one. And then I'm just gonna start my render. As you can see, it's a lot of light coming. So I'm going to select my camera, even smaller, and try to play with the 10, 12. Okay, and here I'm going to the dome light and I'm gonna lock the texture to the icon. So in this moment when I'm gonna start rotating this, it's gonna rotate also here. This is looking fine for now. I'll just play for a bit with the camera exposure. Let's go lower maybe. This looks good I think. 11.5 so most of the time around 11 so uh, everything looking fine what else you can do we can also we can just leave it like this for now so uh, let's see what we can do here we have some materials i'm going to try to use materials that are already in here take them from anywhere else uh, if you just need to follow this video you can just take them from here yeah this one could be nice i think else we have here Let's see some nice metals also we need a black metal looking very nice so yeah what i'm going to try to do is to okay we have it it's the first one i'm going to try to maybe mix two textures 
to already have a Vray UVB randomizer. Uh, in Vray it's working different than Corona. You have the randomizer at the end of your map and you also need to add the tiling in the randomizer. So if you use real world scale, for example, you don't need to add it in here. As you can see, it's not going to work. It's gonna take it from here. So yeah, let's see how big is this texture view image. Oh yeah, it's quite a big texture. I would say like it's two meters by two meters maybe. So I'm just gonna use here, use real world scale and I will have 2000 by 2000. And here for the stucco, it's going to be the same. Uh, what I don't really understand why it's not the same one, almost. And now let's try to apply this to our scene, our object. This one, I'm just gonna apply this for now. And because this doesn't have a new map, there's a box. And if you look, yeah, it's quite nice. You see the material again, it has the stock 360. We need to find another texture with uh, more stuff happening on it. So I'm just gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna go to the concrete and I'll try to get one of these uh, textures and try to combine this one. Maybe this one is looking nice. Okay, let's see. And I'll try to combine this texture with the one that I already have in here. Cosmos, okay, import. Okay, we have it here. As you can see, okay, I'm just gonna apply the same texture also there. Let's see the texture. Probably this is also two meters by two meters. This kind of uh, became a standard lately. Uh, let's see how is this one actually looking. But yeah, it's definitely much better than the other one that we have also here. And this doesn't have a UV map. But I'm gonna add one right away. Okay, let's see the render. I'm just gonna close this so uh, chaos toolbar because it's a bit annoying. First thing that I need to do is to take the material override from here. Okay, I like it. What I'm going to try now is to go to go to my material and now let's try to mix these two together by using um, two general and here let's use uh, no mix for now and you can add it in here and you can add the first texture and then the second one and then in the second place we're gonna add this one and we're gonna add 50 percent and now we're gonna get a mix between these two and what else you can do you can also do that for the normal and you can add both of them in here and this can go to the pump and what else we can do we can also take this and to create here a reflection and add this as a glossiness in here for instance and the moment that we did that this is acting as a glossiness and to work on this you can also add i mean to make it more glossy or less we can add from here a color correction and in this way by using the brightness you can add some glossiness to it so let's add a little bit just to see a little bit of glossiness and now and if you play with the mix amount which is here, you can add more from one texture and less from the other one. So because I liked the second one, the concrete one better, I'm gonna add more from that one and less from the other one. So by changing the mix amount here, you have more or less from one and uh, more or less from the other one. I'm also add, I'm gonna add here a color correction because I'm gonna just want to make this a little bit brighter because it looks overall quite dark, maybe too much. And uh, yeah, let's see how it's everything looking. Um, always don't forget to save. Please view max is, especially with V-Ray and interactive is always uh, crashing. It's not the best thing to have. So yeah, this is my texture right now. I think it's looking quite nice. I like it. And I'm um, just gonna move forward with the rest of the stuff that we need to do. So we need to create this dark, uh, this black metal here, which is going everywhere. So let's do that. Let me see some uh, nice texture also. Okay. So this website, ambiencg.com, here you have a lot of textures and stuff. Truly amazing. 
what this guy is actually doing and uh, this one is looking very nice so I'm just gonna take this one for now. We can take the JPEG or the PNG, these are quite big. I'm gonna take the op 8 k uh, JPEG and uh, let's see metal and for the metal, oh well, yeah they're all looking nice, this is also looking amazing. Oh uh, yeah let's see what else they have in here. This is also very nice, I like it. I don't uh, want to have just a simple metal, I would like to have some textures on it because uh, yeah, otherwise it's gonna be quite a boring render. So I like this one a lot, I will just download this for now. In the meantime I just uh, download, uh, let's see also some concrete. Oh, look at this beautiful texture, it's incredible. Yeah, this is just uh, amazing. Okay, so for now let's work on the metal part. I'm just gonna create here another layer metal. Going to bring here the color. Okay, I'm gonna go with the V-Ray material. And then to this V-Ray material, as usual, you as usual, yeah. add the V-Ray bitmap. And to this bitmap, you go to your download folder. And here I'm just gonna use the, the metal for the metal i'm just gonna use the color that we have in here for this i'm gonna apply it in here in view the okay this is quite nice how big it is god knows but i will just make it uh, yeah two meters by two meters for now actually i will apply directly now via uv randomizer just to be sure I'll make it 2000 by 2000 and then this I'm just gonna copy it I'm gonna load a different texture and that's the metalness and this metalness is gonna go in here as an instance and in the moment that I did that as you can see it's already starting to look like a metal but it's a very reflective one and then I will just take this one and apply the roughness this one and this one is just going in the roughness which is the glossiness in this case and in the moment that i did that it's already looking dark and if i apply an invert to this it should look fine because uh yeah this is a roughness and this is a glossiness and the glossiness and the roughness are actually opposite so if you want one or the other you just need to know exactly what you're doing so the roughness is always a dark image and the glossiness is a bright image. And now the normal, and I'm going to use a normal DX, which is a direct X. And to this one, I need to add here the normal. And this goes here, and this goes in the bump. If it's too much, you can go here less. Uh, you can just leave it as one, and you need to go here in the bump and change it from here. So this, normally this should be 100, but as you can see, it's not working very well. So I'm just gonna use here one or two, and uh, yeah, let's uh, apply this to our doors for now. Okay, I just apply that, and now I just need to have a UV map to all of this, which is on the box, which is looking fine. Let's see some textures. Oh. Okay, this is good. Uh, what else we need to do is to change this by. Uh, we need to have the stochastic light uh, used by element for now. Okay, what else we have in here are these two. We also need to apply that. We just take. This has a new way. This has. Okay, they all have UVs, which is good. And now uh, I hide my layer with the plan. Let me save. I want a black material in here so this needs to go as black. So to do that it's very simple. You go to general and here you use a color correction which you apply it here. Make it go to advanced. Go 0.7 in here but not dark but not too dark and with the saturation almost off. You can leave a little bit. There is no... yeah. Let's see how it's looking for now. Okay, I like what I'm seeing. Okay, let's make the floor also, the asphalt. So for that, I'm gonna asphalt. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Uh, just add the V-ray material in here. Then to this one, we can add just the V-ray bitmap. Then go to the asphalt. As you can see, the asphalt is made with an ambient occlusion, and it also has the color. We're gonna add the color 
into the diffuse. To this, we're gonna add an UVD randomizer, just to be sure. And to this UVD, we're gonna make it styling. And let's see how big is this image. It's probably also two meters by two meters, if not even more. But for now, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, let's go here to the UVD 2000 by 2000. Now I'll just make a copy of this with a shift on and bring the next, uh, which is the, could be the normal, if you ask me. And then to this normal, we're gonna add normal in here with a normal map. And to this, we're gonna add the bump. And then let's bring the roughness. And this can go here in the glossiness as an instance. Let's make this white. This should go invert. Okay, now we have some reflection in there, which is nice. Now we're just gonna add also in general a corona of sorry corona a color correction into this and to make it brighter because we inverted this the texture we need to go actually for now I will just leave it like this it's looking nice just want to apply this here and apply a new map save okay let's move forward to make the glass for the glass is quite simple you just go with the V-ray material you can use a preset from here architectural which is a little bit green Ish, you can fix that on the the full color here it has a depth of one centimeter you can add two let's say and you can just apply this to your glass and also here for the frame here we can also use a black metal and also for this one you just need to add an, a new V This door can also be black, even though probably it's not. I will just make it a metal for now. Also the handle. And this can go with the same concrete. Both of them can go with the concrete, but uh, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create another one and I'm gonna make it black. So I'm gonna add another color correction in here. Oh. And to this, I'll say it black concrete. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna go to black. This could be fine. And I'm just going to apply this to these two parts. And one of them, which is this one, needs to have the general. And this needs to have the same. Okay, I'm just gonna save. Okay, it's starting to look uh, good, I'll say. I'll also add a little bit of glossiness in there. Okay, we have this. And this, and we're gonna go with the concrete. Don't really care. This is the same, also the concrete. The ground. Uh, let's just use a texture from Corona Cosmos. This is looking good. Okay, we have it. <clears throat> of course, we have a randomizer in here, and uh, I would just use this one for all of them, for all the texture, because it doesn't make sense to have more. Then one. I'm going to apply this here. And also to this and this. Just need a UV. OK, 
here and let's add also the other one. I want another texture in here. Okay, this is the soil. I will, uh, of course, as usual, use the same UV everywhere. this here and also here and the last one so concrete texture for the stairs and this one could work stairs I don't even bitmap because otherwise it's not going to work so color this can go in here for this we're also going to add a color correction in case we want to make it a little bit brighter now we'll just do that now and less saturation and then everything is gonna go into the UVP randomizer it's the stochastic tiling and then to this we're gonna add the roughness which we're going to invert add this into our glossiness make the reflection right Output amount with the moment that you inverted, you need to go down to make it brighter. And then the normal here, we're gonna add the normal direct X. And this is going to the pump, it's looking like that because it's too much. Uh, seven maybe. And now uh, there is also a displacement map, but we're not going to use that, at least uh, not for now. I'm just gonna save. Add my texture to my object, apply a new map, the box, hide all, and uh, here this is the water for the water lake. So just going to use a very material with reflection and refraction on. And to this 0.9 we're gonna add also a translucency in both metric uh, for now I'm just gonna leave it this way I'll make it some tests and see how it's everything looking save okay so as you can see this is uh, our scene for now here we need to add also some materials inside maybe a door some details to show some stuff also in here because we're gonna add the light inside there some plants the water is looking fine but it should be much darker but these things are happening because we don't have a bottom of the lake i'm just going to use this for now i'm just gonna apply the same texture and let's see now how it's looking save yeah, it looks still similar but um, so it's all white in there it's also all white in here so okay let's hide this okay for this let's use our material from interior walls this the real world scale add to selected objects and done then just add a new the map box okay uh, another thing that we need to add in here is to create an editable poly just gonna collapse everything from okay i'm gonna do a slice x i break just gonna here copy okay and here we're gonna apply an editable poly now I'm gonna make a nice hole in here and in here we're gonna have a nice light okay here let's hide all of this and now let's select all the stuff in here this can go with the same interior wall okay 
this, the chamfer, I would like to have it a little bit bigger. I don't know what's happening in there, let me just check. Oh, now I get it. Oh my God. And yeah, this is what we have until now. The next part, we're gonna add some vegetation in here and uh, some lights, interior lights for the house also, some interior lights also for the building. And we're gonna start to adding some details to the whole thing to make it better, of course. So yeah, let's move forward. Okay, so this is our uh, render right now. Uh, I'm still not very happy with the brownish color of the metal. So I'm just going to change that, which is here. And now we'll just uh, desaturate that. Yeah, the difference is quite small. Still, still looks brownish, but uh, this is probably also coming from the environment and the illumination. So we can just work on that. I'm just gonna add here a white balance and I will just change. So this is a white balance that is coming from the environment and we can change that by making it less. I'll go back to no, it's more blue overall, but this is working well. I like it. And I will, in the moment that we're gonna add the orangey light, everything is going to change. I'm still not very happy with this uh, asphalt. So maybe I'm gonna try to find a different texture. Uh, this is looking good, but it's a little bit too whitish. I would like to have it more gray. And one thing that I don't like is the fact that these are going in when I want them to go out. But uh, yeah, no, I will just leave them as they are for now. Okay. Let's see the asphalt, mm, yeah. Okay, so what we used here was this one. Yeah, I'm not very happy with the overall look. Let's see uh, some other textures in here that are probably looking better. Maybe this one, I'm not very happy. This is a more concrete one, but we can uh, combine that one with this one. Uh, yeah, let's try. Yeah, the quality is not that good and I would like to see a little bit more of the texture in here. So yeah, as I showed you, it's quite easy to do these kind of things. We need to go to general and in this case, I'm just going to use the mix as usual. And I'm just gonna mix this. It's also possible that in the moment that I'm going to add the displacement in here, it's going to look a little bit better. So let's also do that. So let's see the properties of the displacement. So it's 100 right now. If you want to change the displacement of any type of uh, material, so it's quite simple. You just need to go on that material and you apply here a V-ray displacement mod. And then to this displacement mode here, you need to add texture, but because you already have the texture inside here on the displace, you just need to tell him that you have already a texture and you want to use the one that you already have. So use object material, keep continuity, of course. So this means that it's gonna, if you have round edges, it's gonna keep the displacement in there. And here is the amount of the displacement. So this is going to override the displacement that you already have. So I'm gonna use here around two and uh, let me see my render. I'm gonna add in here also the, the denoiser. So it's called V-Ray Denoiser, V-Ray Denoiser. And for denoiser, I'm not going to use the default V-Ray Denoiser because in my opinion, he's using, uh, is destroying the textures. So I'm gonna use the Intel uh, Open Image, which I think is much better than the original one. And uh, yeah, I'll just leave everything here as it is. I'll clock lock this the image aspect and I will go here for 2500 and I will make a quick render just to see my image and afterwards I will just make a cell on now I will just stop this yeah I'm not very happy with it so I will just go back to my uh, material slate and I will add this as a color here and then I will make a copy of this and to this one I'm gonna add my new texture so it's another asphalt that I took from here and it's this one and this one is gonna go in here and this is gonna go here and now the material should update and I'm gonna use a 50% of mixing between these two and I will also add here a color correction because I want this to have it a little bit darker so I'll go advanced I'll use 0.8 just to be sure that it's much darker and I will also desaturate this 
So now we have a combination between these two textures. What we need to do, we also need to add the combination between the reflection, the roughness of this one and the roughness of this one. So I'm going to add in here also this and I will make a copy a copy of this one. I will add here the roughness, the second, just this. And I will combine now these two here and add this in the reflection glossiness. As you can see in the moment that I did that, it's already changing. And then we need to add that also in here with the normal. And for the normal, we need to take these two together, make a copy of both of them, and then change this one. So it's very important the position. So you need to know that this is the second one. So here I made a mistake, see? Here is going to the color number one, and this isn't going to the color number two. But it doesn't really matter because it's the 50% here, the mix amount. But uh, yeah, let's make it correctly. So we're not gonna have any uh, stupid results. So this is going here, this is going here. And on this one, I need to change the normal with a not different normal. And it's going to be nice also to have this for the displacement map. So I'm gonna add this in here and this can go here. And I will just change this to the other displacement. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's have a quick uh, render. Okay, this is our new asphalt. Uh, which is not bad, it's better. I can see less of the white uh, stuff happening in here. So yeah, for now, I'll just leave it as it is. Uh, I also have some nice textures on my computer. So yeah, in the end, if I don't like how the asphalt is going to look, uh, I'm just going to use maybe some textures from the friendly shades. Uh, they have really nice textures and they are all super high resolution. <sighs> yeah, they, you, I can't complain about anything. They are one of the best on the market with the textures. As you can see here, the quality of this is just, just incredible. For example, if I click on this, you can see all the details in all these textures. And also here, as you can see, this asphalt is looking uh, just amazing. So yeah, I will just make a quick render a little bit later. And if I don't like it, uh, maybe I can... Uh, just going to take uh, one of these uh, textures. So yeah, what I want to do next is to is to add some lights in this scene because as you can see here they have one, two, three, four. Yeah, four spotlights in here. So we need to add those, and then uh, yeah, we need to add some plants. We also have some lights in here under the stairs. So we also need to add those. Uh, there are also some lights inside here in these two rooms. This, all these small lights everywhere, they really help the scene to look better. And also here in the back, from what I see, they have some lights for... So first of all, I'm going to select this part from our scene and I'm gonna create here a cylinder uh, with the height. Um, actually, we're gonna use a spotlight from the Chaos Cosmos. So let me just go there, Chaos Cosmos. And here let's go to 3D models, lighting, ceiling, table, floor, ceiling. And let's see two nice spotlights, maybe this one, which is called the Tetris. Uh, what else they have in here? Uh, also this one. Too bad that they're not actually telling us how big these uh, lights are, I mean the dimensions. So I will just download this for now. I'll just import it and I'll just use this, use anything else. And let's see where it is. Okay, we have it in here i will just move it here for now i will not use everything from this because i just want to use only the uh, middle part yeah it doesn't matter so for now yeah i'll just use it as it is going to create so what i'm going to do next is to create some boxes that are matching 3d and i will make this an editable poly and i'll just select all these faces uh, all these vertices and i'll just move all of them to be sure that i'm more or less on the same width and length of my object. I'll just move this a little bit lower, okay? And now I'll just move both of them here. And this can go here. And uh, yeah, what we need to do next is by using an array, we just need to make an array with all of this. We'll just go, because there are four lamps and I will just uh, use course four, three, four, one, one, two, three, four. And now I will just make the distance between them as big as I need it. 
and I just need to be sure that this distance here is more or less the same as that one. Uh, let me just unhide also the door because I need to be sure that the lamp is above the door. Okay, that's the door. So I need to make just to be sure that this is going here. And uh, let's see for the rest. Oh uh, yeah, we need another one going here, but we can change the, the distance between them. And uh, yeah, what I need to do next is to, to apply the same array also on this. Let's see if the array is working also with the proxies. It is, and this is quite an amazing thing to have. And as you can see here, this had a light also on it. I don't have it so probably I lost it here in the scene to do that I will just go here and I will select all of this and I will just find my light which is that one so yeah for now it's everything fine so what we're going to do to create the holes for these spotlights I did this also before in a different video but I'm going to do it also in V-Ray so I can show you how to do that also in V-Ray so I'm going to use this geometry to make a hole on this but with the material so I'm going to open my material this was the my concrete material and this is my metal no this is the black concrete so let's see this one can go here okay now it's everything arranged and my main material is this one is that correct let me make a selection yeah it's this one so to make a hole in here in this material with that geometry i just need to go in my v-ray maps and from here i need to find the v-ray distance texture and this distance texture i'm gonna use zero distance here i'm going to use inside solid and inside separate inside color i can change just change it with the same color as or the same texture as my as my diffuse so i'm just gonna take my diffuse color which is this one and i'm just gonna add that in here distance. and then here at the object distance texture i need to add my objects so what i'm going to do this first first i'm gonna add this to my opacity which is here so i'm just gonna go like this and now i need to add in here in the very distance text object i need to add my object so my object is going to be this blue color i need to go here i use the plus and now i need to select on this and now as you can see i have it here and now what's gonna happen is gonna make i'm gonna have a hole in here but the problem is that this is going to be also rendered in this box so what i need to tell them the program is to go to object properties and to say this i don't want to have this as renderable and i'm gonna hit ok and now i'm gonna have a hole in here and i'm going to see my object so to demonstrate that let's see so yeah, as you can see, this is how it's actually working. So we have the spotlight in here. So yeah, I think it's a, quite a good method to not to de create more geometry or to destroy your geometry in this way. And also, if you want, you can just move it away and you just get a hole in there. So yeah, this is quite nice. Also, another thing that uh, I would like to do in here is to material pot. Now just to add this in here and let me check. I'll just import this as a mesh unfortunately and yeah by using the self-illumination which is in here i can just get a light right away but i just need to add a, a color to this light so to make it a really beautiful uh, orangey uh, yellow color i will just add a v-ray color in here and this v-ray color needs to go here in the self-illumination as an instance and in the moment that i did that you can already see that I have here uh, my light. It's a little bit blue right now because my color is just pure gray or pure white. Well, it's a gray. So if I make this white, you can see. So to make it a more beautiful color, you just need to go here to use temperature and I'll use a 3500 to have a very orangey color. And also, if you want to have more light in here, you just need to change the power of your self-illumination. You can also use the GI. I will use 50, for example. And now you have a proper light. If I use also the lens effect, you can see the glow in there. And now let's just go here. As you can see, this is how it's looking. And now let's unhide our stuff. I'll just start all over again. So maybe the effect is a little bit too much, but uh, overall I think it's looking good. So maybe the size is too much, intensity just a little bit, bloom one. 
Okay, now I really like what I'm seeing. I think it's looking nice. Let's add also some IES in here. So I'm just gonna go to Photometric, then V-Ray, Lights V-Ray, V-Ray IES, and then just to Just gonna drag an IES in here. Okay, we have one. And now I just need to add an IES to this light. So I'm just gonna use one from, uh, so for this I'm gonna use a uh, temperature, 3500 I said. And then I just need to add an IES in here. I'm gonna click on this and I will just go to Corona IES and I'm just gonna use one from here. So which one? I don't know. Let's see the bright one. Now I just need to make a selection of this. Is this going with the array? Unfortunately not. But uh, yeah, one day it will work. So I will just make copies with instance. Okay, it's all looking good. Now I'll just go to my render view, open my and start a quick render and try to adjust the power. And as you can see, it's not much to see. So this means we need to add a little bit more power to this. So let's go here where the power is. I will add another zero. And in the moment that I did that, you can already see some light in here, uh, which is looking good, I think. I can add a little bit more maybe. Yeah, now it's definitely much better. This texture, it, you can't see it because the noise is on. So yeah, for the asphalt, I think in the end, I'm just gonna change it with something else because I'm not very happy with this one, but I'm happy with the lights here. So let's add the rest of the lights. Okay, first of all, I just need to make a selection with all of this and go here to my, ah, uh, there it's all, everything is on the right spot. And now let's go here, add an, another editable poly into this. And here, I, what I need to do is to create my, uh, I'm just gonna do this uh, on random because uh, it's anyway you're not going to see it so it doesn't make sense to spend too much time on it and here I'm gonna create a gap where my light under the stairs which are going to illuminate this part going to be and now with the V-Ray I will just use a V-Ray uh, light and this is going to be a plane and I will go on top and I will make a selection here and I will go on the side and move my light here and now I will just uh, make copies of it and then another one as an instance all of them of course so I can handle all of them in the same time again okay and now I will just go to my render, save my file. Maybe this material is a little bit too bright. Okay, maybe not that much, so 30. And let's use the same. I will use port 200 right now. I don't wanna have the same, or it can be the same. Okay, this is uh, looking good. What we need to do next is to add another light also in there. In the bathroom, we need also a bathtub. It was a bathtub here, I from what I remember. Yeah, there is a bathtub and uh, yeah, a couple of details. It's good to have details in your renders. As you can see here, so there is also a reflection. So there is a tree in front of it. So we need to add a tree also behind this. This light, this is quite powerful. But the floor, yeah, it's uh, what we have is definitely not correct. And here there is a detail. So yeah, let's... Uh... Okay, let's add, an oh, let's add another light on this part here with the ceiling. And I'm gonna go same with the V-ray light and add this light in here. And move this light like this. And now we should get also some light in the bathroom let's see how it's looking it's not powerful enough and uh, yeah let's have it 150 let's change the temperature to 2500 maybe even make it 
invisible okay it's not bad uh, what we need in here so as you can see there are two empty holes we need two doors in there so i'm just gonna stop this for now and work a little bit of, on this interior let's see okay so what i'm going to do is to create a rectangle in here that is going like this and this rectangle is gonna go here this is going to be my frame for the first door so i'm gonna delete this i'm gonna take this and move it here i'm gonna apply a sweep to all of this this sweep is gonna be a bar and it's going to be like this go 20 even more you can go and here is going to be 10 maybe 20 so yeah what i'm doing now is just just to add a little bit of more details inside this uh, room so in this way i'm gonna get more uh, better interior there and more realistic i'm gonna add also a door uh, probably black from what i saw i'm gonna use 10 and 10 so this means 20 and then i'm just gonna copy all of this here it's not the same size of the door but i'm just gonna change the wall it's much easier to change the size of the wall than to change the door and then yeah let's just apply a black wood material so to do that i'm just going to use some materials some wood from here let's see one this is a veneer it's already dark perfect so let's do that i'm just gonna select all of them let me check first if they have eov so generate sweep generate okay now i have all all of them selected i will just take this one and apply it to selected objects in the moment i do that it should be already here but oh so it's all fine uh, another thing is this door which oh, she also needs a texture and what else do i need let's go to 3d sky and download this uh, free bathtub there you can download around three 3d models per per day from them and bring that in i already did that i will just add here this in the front of the window and uh, yeah we have a little bit more details in there it looks more realistic Okay, this is already looking good you can also add a couple of spotlights in there if you want to make it more realistic but uh, for now i'll just uh, leave it as it is i don't want to spend too much time on creating the interior design for that i think overall is looking good let's also change the floor the asphalt i'm not very happy with this one so i'm just gonna change that now just to finish with this for now okay the asphalt i will just uh, go here this one Yeah, I would like to have this a little bit darker, but uh, it's also... Okay, for now I think it's looking uh, very nice. What I would like to do is to add one of those spotlights. this uh, as a copy in here i just want to add a little bit more uh, light in this room because right now it's looking a little bit boring to me so yeah i'm just gonna add two spotlights in here I need to be sure that they are invisible okay now it's much better i like it so much better
Okay, let's add material also into this ceiling. Material walls, this is the one. Okay, and to this one, we need to add. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take one of these spots and I'm just gonna add these ones in here just to add some light also here. It's just for showing a little bit of light in through there. Perfect. This is amazing. And I would like to make also here some small details. So let's do that. First of all, this needs a chamfer. Two, three millimeters. See a quick render. Okay, so I think this is fine for now. As you see it, it's looking good. Maybe I could add some decals here to make it more realistic. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just gonna go to Chaos Cosmos and here at the materials they have decals and on these decals, let's see which one we can use. This is one of them. So yeah, this is one of them. It's a very decal. Yeah, it's coming directly like that. Uh, let's have a look. I just added the decal inside and as you can see this is how it's looking. I'm not very happy with it even though it looks uh, realistic. So I'm going to show you uh, another method how to add these decals but also if, for example if I want to have this uh, less transparent or I want to have this only in some places. So yeah let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go back to my material here to uh, my concrete let me just uh, rename this concrete and now i'm gonna add this material or texture in here as you can see this is the one this one if you want to see it it's looking like this so what i'm going to do i'm gonna add this into my material so into my concrete material so to do that I'm going to use a composite. I'm going to add that composite in here with first my concrete and on the second material, which is this one, I'm going to add my decal like this. In the moment that I did that, it's all becoming dark, but to fix it, I need to go here and to change my map channel to number two. And now I have another material with an another different and what I'm going to do next, I'm going to apply here a UV map planner uh, without real world scale. I'm going to rotate this. On the map or channel number two. And I'm going to scale this. And I'm also going here and say that I want this with no tiling. So I'm going to take out the tiling overall. And I'm just gonna move this here. I can even make it smaller if I want to. And I can have the tile only in one direction. And uh, I'm gonna use this as a, if you can see it, this is how it's actually looking. To fix this uh, black output, we just need to go back to our texture. And here in the alpha source, you just use intensity. And in the moment that you did that, it's just gonna disappear and it's gonna leave only the stuff that you need. You see here some extra details. And if you want to see more of the decals, you can just add here a different output, for example, three, and it's gonna show more. So if I change this to here, you can see how it's looking. Yeah, I will just leave it one. It's enough. I don't wanna see that much of the decal here. 
yeah this is how you can add decals to your 3d of course so if you have different decals you can just add them in here you can have multiple i also made a tutorial only about this on my youtube channel how to use 3d studio max map channel explain and here i'm explaining how to add all these uh, graffitis on this wall so the technique is exactly the same everywhere so yeah just follow this uh, video uh, this is so max map channel explain and you're going to understand more how to use decals and how to uh, make them look better okay so for now i think i finished with this i'm just gonna add some vegetation in here and maybe some stuff here in the background to so, yeah make it look better so yeah let's start with that first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create another layer called vegetation and i will try to add all of my stuff into this layer i will just go to cosmos and here i'll go to 3d models vegetation okay so let's add first uh, some trees so oh, i'm going to import this one and this one this 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 so uh, yeah these are trees that i'm already used in other tutorials okay let's go and see what we have here this is one Here I need a texture for the sidewalk, so let's uh, do that right now. Let's see if we can find. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not finding anything here. Let me see here. Oh yeah, this, these are the ones. I'm going to use this maybe. These tiles are looking good. I don't need anything fancy. It's quite far. So okay, here let's apply that to our. File and also let's apply a UV map to this. That's quite big, but it doesn't really matter. There's another tree in here. Also going to add some of them on the other side. Okay, now let's add some grass in this area. And uh, we're gonna add also from Chaos Cosmos, 3D model, presets, and let's see. And then for these two, we're also going to use a preset, but this time we're going to use the, uh, let's see, uh, Grass Wild maybe. Okay, what else do we need to bring in is some, uh, some plants okay i like this on the mexican feed feather grass this and this Okay, I'll just save my file for now. For uh, yeah, this scatter, I would like to add my grass also on this field. Because I don't like how the one that it's in here is actually looking. So I'll just do that. And uh, gonna save all over again this needs to have also a material which is I'm just going to apply the tiles and another thing that I would like to do here is to take these lights 
Wait, also this one maybe. And make a copy of this. Go in the front view. This. And add some lights inside my garage. And then this door, I'll just change the pivot somewhere here. And I'm just gonna rotate this for a bit. Just to see a little bit inside there. And uh, Hope this is not sticking out and I don't see anything here. And another thing, I would like to add a car in there. Car. Uh, let's see, fancy car. Port. Okay, and then uh, I'll save and let's have a quick render and yeah, the water there it doesn't look very realistic okay this uh, ground part is not very realistic and also here I can't see the still can't see the texture of this so what I'm going to do I'm going to first take this too Let's check them. Meditable poly. Okay, then I will apply a retopology on this. Now I will apply a turbo smooth to get a little bit more. And then I will apply a noise. Okay, now I think it's going to be better. UV map. Is just to be sure that also this this one needs to go lower for a bit and the sweep is gonna go higher for a bit and here we need another push Okay, save. And for this one, the chamfer. Let's change the chamfer. I'm not very happy with that. Check again that it's a chamfer one, smooth chamfer only. And it should be another one. Yeah, this one. And the water material. Lake. This one. Um, let's go with black. One. I need to play a little bit with the water material. I'm not very happy with it. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add a noise in here for some waves I could add also in the pump. Okay, it's looking better. Let's change the height of the pump up for a bit. Maybe a noise will look better. Okay, yeah, I just made everything darker just to have a muddy water in there because I don't care that much uh, about having a realistic water or whatever is happening in there so okay this is how our render is looking right now I will add also some other stuff in here on the atmosphere okay and I will also scale this for a bit Get some uh, yeah, branches in here so to do that I'm just gonna 
select this and add also here my uh, grass and stuff and um, and for the trees I also need to add them I'm using this just to close my perspective in that direction. Okay, let's save. Let me add also the light mix. If you don't know what light mix is, I will make a tutorial in the future only about this if you care. Uh, I'm adding the light mix only to play a little bit with the lights in case we don't like the overall look. Okay, and now let's add the curves in here. Okay, and then let's add some uh, exposure. These are the highlights burned. Uh, I want more of a moody night. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast in here, a little bit of exposure, and then what else we're going to add? Some hue and saturation. I'm gonna desaturate the whole image for a bit, point 0.1, which is the maximum. And then we're gonna add some filmic tone map. As you can see in the moment that I added that, everything became darker. And now we're gonna play a little bit with this. So normally you just need to get this kind of shape in here. Yeah, if you want more contrast, you can just go further with this. But normally, uh, yeah, if you play a little bit with it, you'll see that you can get the uh, amazing effect. So this is without, and this is with. Even though it doesn't look much, uh, it's a huge difference, in my opinion. And also, if these lights are too powerful, you can make them more powerful if you want, or you can make them less. Uh, it just depends on you. The asphalt is just not looking right so we need to fix that and for the light mix so you can just play a little bit with it for the environment here we can also play with the environment have it more darker and more moody as you can see Okay, the only thing that is not looking realistic at all or it doesn't have the texture is the asphalt so i will just go there and uh, i will just stop this for now so another thing that i would like to do is to let's see where that is okay i'll move that a little bit more in the front and then afterwards i will go to my camera and here i'm just going to use the depth top field on And for this, I'll point for six. I think it should work. Yeah, the environment doesn't matter because this is my environment. Well, my environment is BR01, which is this one. And um, yeah, what else am I missing here is to have some extra lights in the scene to illuminate the trees, for example. And I would like to create also some extra details here for the garage door, because I'm not very happy how it's actually looking right now. And that's going to help also for a bit. So let's see how we can do that. I'm just gonna take a rectangle. And we're going to apply a sweep. This sweep we're going to use a uh, gnome Interpolation a little bit more. 32 maybe. Sweep again. I'm just gonna move this here. Rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. And just uh, yeah, make the whole thing a little bit wider and bigger. Okay, and I will also apply metal material to this. And now it's more realistic. I'll just save that. Oh, I did a mistake. I open my plants layer. And another thing that I would like to do is to take one of these uh, spotlights. So 
So yeah, I'm just making a couple of copies of these uh, spotlights just to have a little bit of uh, light on this tree coming from the grass to create like a beautiful ambient for this. Let's try another thing in here. The aerial perspective is not really working, so I will add the Beery environment fog. Okay, so uh, definitely looking better. Yeah, it's better with this tree here. Just to close the perspective in there and what I would like to add also here is the a little bit of wet the floor because right now I'm still not very happy with this floor uh, with the asphalt sorry so to do that I'm just going to add to this uh, reflection glossiness and color correction and this is going to bring a little bit of reflection of this floor because right now it's looking very boring and just to make a little bit the floor wet does and I would like to get a little bit more light in here and another thing that we can do is to take the specular out from here or make it less in this way these lights are gonna be showing less and uh, for this floor for the asphalt I'm gonna add here a texture which is looking like this and I'm gonna use this for creating some uh, paddle rain paddle on the surface to do that I'm just gonna use this here the code parameters so it's gonna go here like this as one and uh, yeah let's see how big we need to make this so maybe 4000 by 4000 I would say and also probably it would be nice to have some lights in between the uh, plants these bushes here because right now they look kind of uh, boring okay it's not bad uh, I will invert this map for now Another thing that I would like to do is to add some grass in here because right now I don't really have anything. Uh, what I'm going to do is to go past on top of you and just go here, here. Yeah, apply an editable poly to it and then go to my grass and add also the grass here also add the ground in there and here apply an UV map and to this I will also need to add a little bit of uh, wet soil just make it like this it should look fine maybe some of you are gonna ask me why I'm using a physical camera in here well the physical camera is working exactly the same as the V-Ray camera in here and has a couple of more uh, options than the V-Ray camera and yeah you can also get the V-Ray camera in here if you want and yeah let me also add a couple of these lights in between the plants there I would like to have a little bit of more uh, yeah, landscape design let's call it because right now it's uh, kind of looking boring that area and I will like
Okay, now I'll just collapse this and attach everything in one object. And then here I'm just gonna add the D-ray distance text zero add this to opacity and add that object in here put it here yeah okay and now let's check how is our render actually looking and let's see a quick render Okay, it's almost done. I think it's uh, looking better, definitely, at least the uh, asphalt here in the front side. One thing that I don't like is the fact that I don't see anything here, so I'm just gonna add the tree there. And we're done. And then we're just gonna render this. I'm just gonna copy this tree as an instance and scale it down for a bit. And go up to my render. Yeah, 2500 is totally fine. 0 0.1 image filter, land cost, uh, I don't care about this color mapping. Yeah, Reinhardt is the best one. Camera, I don't care. Brute force with light cache. Another thing that I would like to add in here is the ambient occlusion. 10 millimeters means 1 centimeter, 0.3. And I'll make this bigger, maybe 15. And, uh, yeah, I will add some render elements in here in case I want to make some changes. So one of them, which is very important, is the wire color. And that's it for now. In the light mix, I'm going to save everything from the frame buffer from here. Save separate channel. You can also use separate folders. And I'm going to my hard disk in 3D Studio Max render. I'm going to call it 3D exterior. I'll save everything as a targa. Save 32 bits. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like the sky. It was a little much brighter. So I can just go there right now and make my sky which is very light zero one. Make it brighter. Yeah, it's giving a better, it's looking better when it's a little bit brighter. It looks like a morning uh, guy. Okay, so as you can see, this was my hour render. Now I'm just going to open my RGB uh, image in Photoshop and I'm gonna start making some uh, uh, post-production using the camera row. I'm using some contrast, a little bit of highlights, less, more shadows, less black, a little bit of texture and clarity, a little bit of dehaze, uh, less vibrance. Here I'm trying to add a little bit of curves to play with them, but it's not looking very nice. Uh, just a little bit of sharpening, playing a little bit with the color mixer to adjust my sky. At the end I'm just going to play a little bit of effects with grain and some vignette. And then at the end I'm just trying to calibrate a little bit the colors, just playing with the colors to adjust the yellows and uh, the greens. 
Also the blues, I just made them more saturated. It's looking much better in my opinion. And yeah, this is my final render. And now in the next phase, I'm just gonna adjust a little bit my final image just to make it a little bit more appealing. So I'm gonna use a lens correction with where I'm going to apply a little bit of chromatic aberration, as you can see. Uh, the vignette I'm not going to use here because I already apply a vignette on the camera raw okay and now i'm going to show you how i'm playing a little bit using the wire color which it came directly from my render from v-ray and here you make you just make selections and you can create mask for adjusting different uh, components from your render in this case the vegetation so this is my render yeah this layer is not used from for anything and then the first one that uh, I'm going to use is the one for the sky. I'm just making the sky a little bit more blue. And then a second one, I'm just adjusting the color of the sky. On the third one, I'm just adjusting this vegetation in the front. And then at the end, I'm just adding one person in here for creating my narrative. And now I'm just going to show you how I did all the adjustments for this person. So I just added a picture with someone with an umbrella and then I made a couple of layers with the shadows for this person coming uh, directly from the lights. So they are kind of in the same direction as the lights. And then I, will, I just applied those two shadows, one here and the other one on the other direction. I don't know if you can actually see them. And then just using a layer on top of it on top of this i just made everything more gray and darker the middle part and then using curves as you can see i just adjust a little bit the light and then again i adjusted the light using the hue and saturation and i went with the lightness uh, lower and then more with the color balance i just added a little bit of blue to the shadows and to the mid tones and then I applied a brightness and contrast and I added more contrast to the person. And in the last layer, I just adjusted the lights. I just added the lights that were on the environment on the left side and the right side. As you can see here, I just created the layer and uh, I applied some colors uh, with a brush and I just applied some orangey red col colors and all of them uh, as a soft light. Okay, so that was all for uh, this part. As you are going to see on the second part I did the raindrops so for that I just use a simple noise map and I applied a motion blur to it and then afterwards using the levels I just uh, changed the power of the level so you're going to see less of those raindrops as you can see here Okay, so this was the episode for today. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to create a tutorial about how to add cut out people into your renders, but more in depth to add more people in different scenarios and so on. So in case you liked it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. In this way, many other people are going to find my video and um, see you in the next one. Bye.